Good afternoon from IBC 2025. I'm here together with Rami Musavi, Senior Product Manager at ST Engineering, iDirect. Hello, nice to meet you again. Hi, nice to meet you. Africa's digital divide is still a major challenge. So how does ST Engineering, iDirect, C-Satellite and Crown Technologies working together to extend connectivity to the last mile? Yeah, so we actually have a couple of ways that we're looking at uh, the connectivity in, in Africa. Uh, both on the uh, data connectivity side, but also on the media side. And we have uh, very interesting technologies that we're bringing to the market uh, to try to address those things. So uh, on the media side, we uh, have been for the last 40 years a critical part of the media and broadcast world. We have been participating in the definition of the latest standards that are used in that world. And one of the latest standards is to address how people are moving from traditional broadcasts into streaming and uh, moving to using their own devices, smart devices, instead of relying on a set-top box that's connected to a TV. Mm. Um, and to address that conversion, uh, we have participated in the development of uh, the latest DVB standard, which is called DVB NIP or native IP. Mm. And the idea is to be able to produce and deliver IP video over satellites in an efficient way. Because if you were to deliver IP video today, in the traditional sense, you would have to create uh, multiple point-to-point -point connections between a user and the person providing the video. But of course, if you try to multiply that by hundreds or millions, then it puts a lot of pressure on the network. So in order to address that, uh, the DVB standard utilizes a multicast uh, technology, which takes a single high-performance stream, high-quality stream, and multicasts that to in an infinite amount of users. And so we are very proud to be one of the first uh, companies uh, partnering with other uh, vendors to provide um, this uh, technology uh, in, in, in many regions in the world. Uh, and we believe that uh, we'll be able to replicate that in Africa. And then on the connectivity side, uh, we have been uh, very heavily investing in uh, development of the 5G NTN standard, uh, supporting that. Um, and we have uh, a demo uh, that we are going to be uh, showcasing on how to bring the satellite world into the core network, into that 5G connectivity, so we can have a better marriage of satellite and the telco world. All right. And uh, with those two aspects, we're bringing hopefully a complete comprehensive picture to the Africa market uh, and to the rest of the world. When we, when we see the Africa's digital divide, uh, would you say that we actually have the technology to overcome the obstacles? Yeah, absolutely. Certainly with the developments that we're making here, um, you know, 5G and uh, telco connectivity has always been a challenge to expand at scale. Sure. And we believe that satellite is the perfect marriage to the telco world to expand that reach in a significant and meaningful way. Uh, the beauty of satellite is that really it has that global reach and, uh, and provides a scale that you need where otherwise you would have to incur a lot of costs to deploy a 5G network uh, everywhere, right? So what we're doing with uh, the development that we have today is kind of a threefold approach uh, where we start with a non-3GPP standard-based uh, system that allows our satellite networks to communicate with a 5G core um, as if it were operating as a 5G device. So what that means is that our satellite customers can benefit from all the 5G technology without having to reinvest a lot into their infrastructure and to their systems. And that provides the perfect bridge for, for our customers and for the technology, as in 5G NTN, um, to eventually adapt and, and get uh, mature enough so it can roll out fully into that space. So that would be the next step uh, where we would have a full 5G NTN network that the satellite operators would adopt fully. And then we would have also a hybrid model that combines traditional satellite now connected through our interconnecting gateway to the 5G core, working alongside a fully um, 5G NTN based uh, network okay. as well. So, nice. um, and when we do that, we then have the possibility to expand again the reach uh, of uh, the connectivity reach that, that we can offer with satellite, whilst also building the framework for a 5G network to fully mature in Africa. Um, obviously, every region is different and Africa is a big continent. You know, there are different um, requirements from each region. 
but we believe that uh, the partnerships that we have in the country allow us to address the various use cases uh, as needed be. Right. So NTN networks or NTN are often described as a game changer for 5Gs. And you just already touched base slightly. So can you share right. a bit about the upcoming news launches you have? Prepared? Yes, yes, exactly. So um, we are doing a demonstration of how we would take that 5G NTN, the non-3GPP version of that, applied on our satellite network. Yeah. So we have a demonstration of that uh, where it's actually communicating to a real 5G um, core network. That's the first one. But what we're also demonstrating is roaming. And we're talking here about inter-satellite network roaming. Yeah. And we're utilizing all the de technology that was developed on the 5G network and on the telco side to do all of the backend back work needed to do a trans, uh, smooth transition, smooth roaming capability between networks. So uh, those are two major achievements that we believe will take us in that direction towards uh, full connectivity and, and, and uh, being able to uh, really bring people connected uh, in a, mo a much more significant way. So it's more kind of a natural evolution to create a seamless connection? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so hopefully that will allow our uh, satellite operators to also work with each other um, and provide a bigger footprint mm. uh, that allows a user that, that goes from one country to, to the next in Africa to seamlessly go uh, in between those countries and have their satellite equipment deployed in these countries uh, without having to worry about um, the satellite network that they're operating on because they are effectively roaming between these different providers. So again, it expands the coverage possibilities um, and the collaboration between the different satellite organizations. So. so it also, let's say, gets rid of the duplication of infrastructure. Absolutely, absolutely. So that is, uh, again, a way that we are able to uh, help bring down the costs Uh, which eventually will bring down the cost of the satellite equipment that you need to deploy yeah. to the customers um, and uh, and allow for more people to actually benefit from the satellite network. Huh. Let's let's come back to DVB NIP. So it's positioned as the next step in IP-based content delivery. Mm -hmm. So how do you see DVB NIP transforming broadcast and broadband services, particularly in emerging markets like Africa? Sure. So um, I think... One of the major advantages of um, DVB-NIP is that it now addresses um, more directly the end-user devices that are used today. And if you think about emerging markets, um, I think for the most part, um, a lot of the um, ways that people are consuming media has transformed into that mobile type of environment. Um, and again, uh, Previously, without DVB NIP, it was always a challenge for us to address that in a scalable way. Because unless you, um, of course, there's the telco environment, yeah. uh, but otherwise, it's very difficult to to address that for our broadcasters even uh, in a in an efficient way. So, with the development of DVB NIP, we believe that we have really a uh, a mechanism that allows those traditional broadcasters to slowly transition themselves, their services, their portfolio, their catalogs of video into something that's much easier to consume. Um, we have, uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, we have the first deployment of DVB NIP. Um, and as an example that I believe can be replicated in Africa, um, we had uh, the first deployment of NIP in Peru. And we worked there with the uh, government of Peru um, to develop a system that allows you to deliver information. Mm -hmm governmental information. And this was very key to them because Peru was one of the countries that was hit the most by the COVID uh, pandemic. Mm. They lost a lot of people and primarily it was because they had no means to understand that what's, what's happening. So we were able to deploy a system uh, that can deliver connectivity to all the remote regions in Peru and that allows all those unconnected regions to get access to media that can, they can see directly on their devices. Um, and we believe that model can be replicated in other regions, including Africa. Nice. So, so what does it mean for telcos and MNOs, the DVB NIP opportunity? What do you see as an opportunity for? For uh, MNOs and telcos, I believe the, uh, the ability for uh, DVB NIP to offload a lot of the content that tip traditionally would have to be served by the telcos that would put a burden on their networks 
especially for high visibility events. So think about um, how uh, video connectivity works today, especially when you're trying to watch video. Um, you are establishing a connection between yourself and the server to get that video. Um, when you have uh, 10 people, that's fine. 100 people can be fine. Then you, when you expand that to millions of viewers that are all trying to access the same content, it puts a tremendous burden on the network. And that network could be a telco network. Uh, what we're offering with NIP is a way to multicast and broadcast those high visibility events that require a lot of people watching the same type of content in a multicast way that allows you to take a single very high quality feed and multiply it to an infinite amount of users simultaneously. So when you do that, a lot of that burden that's put on the telcos to supply otherwise that same service gets offloaded to um, through satellite. So um, Is it again, more reliable than a classical network? Absolutely, because if you think about, again, a high visibility event and the amount of pressure that you're putting on a network, that means that the quality, uh, you might lose packets because there's so much congestion on there, and that ultimately reflects in poor quality of experience when you're watching the content. Delays so, and latency also. Delays, uh, blurriness of the, the content, um, especially for live events like sports. You don't want to be the last person hearing that a goal was scored. So uh, it becomes very critical to have um, a very reliable video signal. Um, I haven't seen that, I think, well, some samples over the years with Netflix or live events where suddenly the stream was not accessible anymore. Absolutely. So it's not just a challenge for um, the telcos but even those established players like Netflix, even to till this day, struggle with these kinds of issues. Yeah. And we believe that by offloading a lot of that data and passing it through the satellite networks, we're able to provide consistent, reliable quality to all of the users, whether they're using satellite or whether they're using telco or even terrestrial. So we're uh, providing a, a service to, to all the different communities uh, that want to enjoy content. So, so what is your outlook from a technology perspective if we look at the African market? Sure. I mean, we are a, a strong believer, as you might have uh, inferred from my uh, uh, discussion here about uh, DVB-NIP. So this is uh, a standard that we very much believe in. Uh, we believe it's the future of video. Um, and on, on the connectivity side, we believe that 5G NTN is going to be a game changer, not just for... Um, you know, our satellite operators, but also um, the merging of the satellite and the telco world, bring those two worlds together, uh, is going to be a, a game changer overall that we're very heavily invested in. So with our Intuition platform that we're launching uh, very soon, uh, you know, you'll see the demonstration that I mentioned about the 5G uh, non-3GPP core and the roaming capabilities that we have. And that's just the um, the first phase of many new features that we'll be able to deliver with that uh, platform. So we're very excited. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks yeah. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. It was Tech Africa News from IBC 2025. You can find more on techafricanews.com.